state which will live in infamy. No matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion. December 7th, 1941. A date that has lived on in infamy. And a date that led inexorably to the American bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But did it have to be that way? Or could diplomacy have saved the people of Japan, as well as the American soldiers, staged to invade? The perception of the dropping of the atomic bomb is very different today than it was at the time. Today, the necessity and morality of the act is debated by some, while it was denounced as genocide by others. But how was it perceived in 1945? To President Harry Truman, the bomb was a tool to end war forever. To some of the Manhattan Project scientists, it was the bright light of the future, while to others, it was the dark shadow of the future apocalypse. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. To American generals, it was both a means of ending a costly war and an opportunity to study the science of death. To the American public, it was a way to end the hardships and sacrifices of life on the home front. For the soldiers themselves, it was a way for them to finally go home. And lastly, for the people of Japan, it was an indiscriminate bringer of terrible pain and suffering, the like of which had never been seen before. The general American feeling at the time was that the brutal expansion of Japan needed to be stopped once and for all. The public had heard and read of the brutal invasions and conquests of Korea, Manchuria, China, French Indochina, and other Asian nations. 1931, Japanese troops leave for the conquest of Manchuria. Japan, the first of this war's aggressor nations, starting out a full 14 years ago on a career of international conquest and pillage. Japan seized a whole new empire, grew even more self-confident and aggressive as she fed on other people's suffering. Even before that fateful December morning, the American opinion of Japan was low. And when Pearl Harbor was attacked, those feelings of disapproval and distrust transformed instantly into rage and hatred. From that day on, America was committed to ending the expansion of those nations of the world committed to world domination, of which Japan was one. President Roosevelt began the development of the atomic bomb because of the threat of Hitler building one first. Einstein and other scientists warned him of this possibility. Pearl Harbor escalated the need. The Manhattan Project and $2 billion made nuclear fission into a weapon. But it became clear Germany didn't have the A-bomb. And with their defeat and Roosevelt's death, a new president had to decide on the bomb's use. President Harry Truman hadn't known of the bomb's existence until he took office. Now he had a way to end the war. After four years of bloody war, America's victory was finally in sight. But the military warned that the Japanese would not surrender without an American invasion, and that would be costly in human life. The Japanese military were depending on a powerful weapon, the people's willingness to die for the emperor. Japanese pilots would dive bomb into American ships, Ordinary soldiers learned how to strap bombs to their bodies and throw themselves under tanks. The soldiers were trained to strap bombs to their bodies and throw themselves against the tanks. I trained myself that I could die at any time. The general population was to become part of the battle against invaders. Even schoolgirls were trained to attack American soldiers with sharpened bamboo spears. A bloodbath seemed inevitable. While in Berlin for the Potsdam Conference with Allied leaders, Truman found out about the successful test of the atomic bomb called Trinity. He consulted with Churchill, who agreed with its use on the Japanese, and with Stalin. He remarked to Stalin that the United States had a powerful new weapon, and Stalin uh, said words to the effect he hoped it would be put to good use. Of course, at that time, nobody on our side knew the depth of Soviet penetration into Los Alamos and that Stalin knew perfectly well what Truman was talking about. The only thing I guess that Stalin didn't know was that Trinity had taken place and it's possible that he even knew that. 
There are indications that the Potsdam terms were softened to unconditional surrender of the armed forces to give the Japanese a way out and maintain their emperor. But apparently, the Japanese misinterpreted the move as weakness and rejected the terms with contempt, hoping to end the war on their own terms. With this, the dropping of the bomb was inevitable. Hiroshima, one of Japan's arsenal cities, was selected as the first to feel the weight of atomic power. 21 days after the New Mexico dress rehearsal, a lone B-29 was over Hiroshima carrying an atomic bomb. At 8.15 in the morning of August 6th Japanese time, the first atomic bomb hit an enemy target. The bomb was aimed to explode above zero point, a spot in the city at the junction of the Motoyiso and Ota rivers. The bomb was intentionally set to explode well above the zero point to dissipate its radioactivity. The flash was very brilliant and it only lasted a very short period of time. It was over in a few short seconds. I did the job and I was so relieved that it was successful, you can't understand it. Seeing the fires in, on the ground and the cloud coming up, then you get pretty uh, distressed that there's such havoc down there and people are suffering. Later on, after we were flying back, conversation started about, you know, the war being over as a result of this bomb. Despite the number of people we killed, we saved multiple numbers over that for being in a war and being killed on the American side, on the Japanese side. spare the Japanese people from utter destruction that the ultimatum of July the 26th was issued at Potsdam. Their leaders promptly rejected that ultimatum. If they do not now accept our terms, they may expect a rain of ruin from the air, the like of which has never been seen on this earth. received this afternoon a message from the Japanese government in reply to the message forwarded to that government by the Secretary of State on August 11th. I deem this reply a full acceptance of the Potsdam Declaration, which specifies the unconditional surrender of Japan. The nation had no rice to eat. People had not eaten white rice for a whole year. How could such a country go to battle? The Americans knew that very well and still dropped the atomic bomb. Why? It was an experiment. They knew that the bomb had enormous explosive power. What they did not know was how much damage the radiation would cause. Some scientists thought they knew, but they had not tested it. So they made an experiment to find out by testing it on human beings. The final decision that resulted in the two bombs, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, was not made in Potsdam. It wasn't made by Truman. It was made by the Japanese militarists when they rejected any opportunity to surrender just their armed forces and save further massive loss of life. Arguments continue as to the morality of dropping the bomb. Was it really necessary? Could it have been avoided? All we can do is hope it will never happen again.